You're listening to the Conversations with Kids Peace podcast. Advice, information, and inspiration from experts at the leading provider of mental and behavioral health services for children, adults, and those who love them. Now, here's your host. The Conversations with Kids Peace podcast is sponsored by Spyglass Solutions, a nationally recognized management consulting group with comprehensive experience in the challenges of the healthcare field. Learn more at spyglasssolutions.org slash conversations. Hello and welcome to our podcast series, Conversations with Kids Peace. I'm Bob Martin. September is upon us and it's a special time for the supporters of Kids Peace's foster care office in Fayetteville, North Carolina as it brings the annual Kids Peace Fayetteville Auction. It's a celebration of local artists and their work that help the staff support foster families in that region. The auction is coming up September 15th, so we thought we'd talk about the effort with Mike Edelman, the program manager in the Fayetteville Foster Care Office, who's been part of the auction effort since the beginning. And Mike, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Bob, for having us. We really appreciate the opportunity to speak about our event and um, really share all the information about foster care that we can. Well, I'll tell you, the event is is amazing. And for those who have not experienced it, can you kind of briefly describe what the Fayetteville auction is and, and what happens during the event? Absolutely. So the auction is it's really a coming together of the community. Um, the main focus of it is on the auction of um, artistic uh, items. Um, basically, what we do is we take old beat up things that used to be just chairs, um, we have since advanced to chairs, tables, doors, um, anything that's kind of been thrown away. Um, we give them to local people in the community, um, artists, if you will. Uh, they they jazz them up. They make them look pretty. They decorate them. They paint them. Sometimes they chop them up and transform them into totally different items. Um, and they make them beautiful again. And then those items are auctioned off. Uh, we have both a silent and a live auction during the event. Um, and there's other other fun things to do, too. We, we're serve, we serve a meal. Um, we have raffles. Um, opportunities to buy kids piece apparel, um, all different different things for people to to just get out and have a, have a good time. You you kind of alluded to this. This is the ninth annual auction. I should have said that at the beginning. You've been involved since the first one, and it was actually called the Chair at T Auction, C H uh, A I R, table and chairs. So explain exactly what that was. Sure. So I'll be honest. So my first uh, year, nine years ago, I was a family consultant. Um, I wasn't as involved with the board as I am now. I just, you know, got updates during staff meeting from our then program manager. Um, and I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical of the event. Um, I didn't I didn't really get it. I was like, take old chairs and, and fix them up. And, and, you know, the story behind it of, you know, we take in these foster children who are a lot of times thrown out and abused and we try to, you know, make them to become grown up, um, eventually be grown up, want them to be successful grown ups. And that's really what we're doing with these chairs. But I still, I was a little skeptical, I'll be honest. Um, I remember that first one, we, we only had maybe 12 or 13 chairs. Um, and there weren't a whole lot of people there. Um, we actually, we had a Gatesport Country Club um, outside at Unlerk Pavilion. Um, and we ended up raising about $2,600, which I was shocked and amazed by um, nine years ago about how much money we made, because that was way more than my expectations that I had. Um, but obviously, our event has grown significantly since then. Uh, the last four years, we've we've ended up raising between fifty dollars to $60,000 um, each event. Um, so it, it's definitely come a long way from the first one. And obviously, that's that's the important thing. That's what that's why you're doing it. But I, I want to mention, I had the honor of attending the uh, 2018 auction, and it was really inspirational for me. In in, in part because of the art and the, the work that people have done, their support, but also because that came just just after your area had suffered in a natural disaster. What was that like? What was that experience? Yeah, that was right after a hurricane. Um, I believe it was Hurricane Matthew. Um, and there was significant, very significant flooding um, in our area. There are lots of people without power. Um, some of our own associates were out of power for, for a couple of weeks. Um, and just watching how people in a community come together when when horrible things happen for the greater good, it's just, it, it always is, is so great to see. Um, it, it's, it's almost in a way, it's really, it's, a, it's almost like a symbol of foster care, right? Because when, when a kid comes in because of a traumatic disaster that they've suffered, it, it doesn't just take the foster parent, it takes a whole community to help give those kids rehabilitation and get them back on the right track. Um, you know, it takes therapists, it takes kids' peace, the schools, the social workers, everybody. 
um, and, and just seeing how the community came together that night and um, just it gave them a chance to have fun and let loose and and at least a little bit of normalcy while we continue to get through that disaster. Yeah, that was it was really an amazing thing to see the community rally. And, and when I say it was right after, it was literally like three weeks after the floodwaters yeah. had receded. It was amazing when, when I got there and, I, and they were I said, I've been reading about this flood. And, and they said, yeah, we had it, but we're moving forward and we're doing the event and everybody came out. Um, one of the things that was interesting to me when I saw it, and, and I wanted to ask you, do you see the phenomenon of attendees coming each year and seeking to collect pieces from the same artist year after year? We do. Um, we have some people who have purchased entire collections from the same artist. Um, one gentleman last year's auction, uh, we had some pictures of his that we used at the event where he had uh, eight or nine different art pieces all done by the same artist that he, we kind of had a display where they weren't for sale, but we had like a little art show um, of all of his different pieces that he had purchased. Um, and not only that, but we have a lot of the same artists who come back year after year. Um, we have artists who've been doing this for seven or eight years straight. Um, I think we have a couple that have been doing it every single year since the first one. And that's always great to see. You mentioned that the uh, the auction's coming up uh, or, and uh, it's September 15th. What can you tell us about it? What's new this year? Yeah, so new this year. So we're actually going back to our roots. We're going back to the same location as our very first auction um, at Gatesport Country Club. Um, at that year, we had it outside on their pavilion, on their golf course. Um, this year, we're having it inside um, to go back to a more formal space, which is one of the major things that's different from this year, from the last two. You know, when COVID happened, we really had to pivot with our auction. We, we wanted to have an outdoor space. Um, and we've had a great partnership with a local brewery called Dirtbag Ales that has that outdoor space for us. And while that was wonderful for COVID, we really lost our messaging um, that we had been doing previously. We always like to tell a story. Um, about one of our kids in care that's overcome um, obstacles to find success. Um, we want to always kind of do some kind of a call to action because we're always looking for new foster parents in the community. Um, and that aspect of the event was was really lost the last two years. Um, there's a lot going on. It's, you know, there's different spots because it's out so outdoors where things are happening. Um, this year, we're kind of bringing it back inside. Um, we're having a sit-down meal so people aren't wandering around getting their food even. Um, they're going to be sitting there. They're going to be focusing on on our messages um, and what's going on. Um, and to share some of that, we actually have one of our children who, who's 15 years old who's going to be presenting. Uh, she actually chose the name Hope for herself, not realizing that, of course, Kids Pieces of Mission um, involves providing hope, help, and healing. So that, that was really awesome that she chose that word and she's going to be talking and um, one of our staff Marsha Hill is also going to be presenting um, on the need for foster homes for teenagers and how difficult those are to find and how important it is to provide good safe homes for them. Um, obviously a fundraising event is uh, at some level about the money. Um, what what do these funds mean to your office? What what are you able to do to support these families because of the generosity of the of the artists and the people who are bidding on their pieces in the auction? Yeah, so it's about the money, but only because that money is used to help the kids. Um, so so yes, you're 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 correct about that. So I'm glad you asked that question because some people ask, and and you know I think some people have ideas of what we use and use the money for, and a lot of those ideas are correct. But one thing that doesn't get brought up a lot that I wanted to talk about um it is stability so i view and, and our office views and uh, kids piece in general views we want to keep kids stable in their homes we don't want disruptions if we can avoid it because anytime a kid moves that's another traumatic um layer being added to them um but we also have kids who sometimes they get angry and they break things um and sometimes when parents have to spend a lot of money getting a new tv or patching holes in their wall or fixing a window they just can't afford to have the child anymore um, we use our funds to repair and replace those items that are broken, um, which really gives the foster parent a reason to be like, you know what, I didn't have to pay anything for this. It's just a window. Kid pieces were fi is fixing it. I'm going to give this kid another chance. We're going to work through this anger and get him so he doesn't feel the need to break things anymore. Um, so that's one of the ways we do it. It, it helps build, build stability for the children. Um, we also do fun things with it. Um, you know, we purchase sports equipment. Um, we have a, a young person now who wants to join band, but they needed a trombone to join and trombones are not cheap. So we're buying the child a trombone. Um, we sent a, uh, one of our young adults to Johns Hopkins uh, journalism camp this summer for three days um, with some money. Um, we're also doing a raffle currently to send one of our families with their foster children to Disney World next year. 
Um, we're going to cover that trip because we want these kids to experience things in life that a lot of kids in foster care don't. I never, ever want to hear somebody or hear a foster child come to, into our office and say, well, I can't do that because I'm a foster child. We have the means to provide those funds for that child to do whatever it is that they need to do, assuming they're working hard and the foster parent is, is providing the good care and, and, and they're deserving of that. It's such an important point to make and, and a, a great way to do it in a fun way to make it with the, the, uh, the auction and, and the uh, how the kids can benefit. And it'd be wonderful to hear from uh, the young woman, Hope, um, yeah. as to what her journey was about. And one thing to add to that about hope too is the years we've had a presenting uh, a child a child story present, whether it's a child presenting it or one of our staff, and that child does do an art piece that we auction off, and we always give that money right back to the child. Um, we, we do not take the money for other that that is for that person. Um, we give it to the social worker or the foster parent, depending on their situation. Um, it gets put in a savings account. Um, one of our one of our children was using it to put a down payment in the car. She has since turned 17 years old and she, she raised about $2,400 and she was using that to help purchase her first automobile. So we always make sure that money goes right back to that child. That's great. That's great. Um, Mike, we ask each of our guests on the uh, podcast to share a life hack, a favorite saying, something to do around the house, a tip about that. So uh, what's your life hack for us today? So mine is just using humor. Um, using humor in all things, situations get tense, um, you know, whether that's in personal relationships here at the office, um, you know, working with kids who are sitting here all day. If we sat around all day and talked about the trauma that our kids have been under and we didn't take time to laugh and tell jokes, um, we'd all be miserable people. Um, life's too short to be serious all the time. It's important to laugh and, and laughter really is the best medicine and, and using humor to, to interrupt, interrupt tension. Uh, it's just it's just really helpful for everything. I think it's also very uh, very helpful to have events like the auction because Absolutely. I know you guys there's a lot of joy in that room. And even mm -hmm. even as you talked about the trauma that that you see and your your staff sees every day with the kids you're helping, uh, it's it's just a wonderful thing, uh, inspirational, um, uh, enriching thing. And uh, mm -hmm. I was certainly glad to be part of that, and I, I certainly am glad. Uh, we had a chance to talk about it. Mike Edelman is program manager in the Kids Peace Foster Care Office in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Their annual auction takes place September 15th. You can learn more about it and its history at uh, the world's longest URL. This is auction one word, dot com. Mike, again, thank you for taking the time to talk to us and good luck with the auction. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Bob. And thank you all for joining us as well. We look forward to having you join us again for more conversations with Kids Peace. Until then, take care.